Hi everyone, this is Pam Coey and this is part two of my big yellow painting, seven foot by eight foot canvas. And I'm actually recording this little intro after I discovered a, a very big mistake that I made and it has to do with um, materials. And um, I, I really am a big believer that there are really no mistakes in art. However, there are mistakes with um, materials and that's what I discovered later on in this video. So when I start, when you start to view this video, you're going to notice me talking about the painting as if uh, everything's going great because it was until I got about halfway through this segment of part two and I kind of realize that something's not right and I'll tell you about it. Um, and also I, I want to thank you for watching part one. Thank you for your comments and your likes and Thank you to all my subscribers. Also, thank you so much for watching part one. Um, I know it was kind of entertaining. It was entertaining for me as well. I had a great time. Thank you for your likes, your comments, subscribing, and uh, I just really enjoy this audience. And I'm going to reveal in this video, let you know that I've got an upcoming uh, brand new subscriber group for those of you who like to binge on these YouTube videos. Um, but they're a lot different from what you've been seeing here. Um, number one, they're longer, they're more in depth, um, they're on a variety of topics, everything from yes, looking over my shoulder with me painting and talking about the challenges and problem solving and all those things, just like I do on YouTube, except in way more depth. For those of you who want that type of information, I realize it's not for everybody. And so this library is chock full of over 33 hours of video content, and I'll be telling you more about it, and I hope you'll be interested. Um, I'll give you more information in just a bit. Hi everybody. Okay, so I have started this fairly big painting and it's behind me. It's on canvas and it is a, I think seven foot by eight foot canvas. Um, but I just wanted to talk about kind of where I'm at right now. I just started and it's really not, I, I'm not disappointed with how it, it started, but it's certainly not uh, after living with it for a few days, it's not where I want to keep it. And so I'm considering my options and I did start out with a fairly limited palette. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is a very large canvas and it's the largest I've worked on and the first time I've really worked on canvas with acrylic. Uh, that's, you know, it's pre-prime canvas. I have worked on raw canvas before, but this is the first time that I've worked on this scale, which is seven feet by eight feet, as well as, you know, acrylic on pre-primed canvas. And because it's also new for me, I'm just trying to get a feel for the amount of space that I have to cover. And that in itself was quite interesting because, you know, everything has to scale up, not just your tools, but all your marks. So, you know, I've been living with it for a couple days and I think at first I was just happy that I was able to cover this quantity of um, surface area. And I was going for uh, just trying to figure out my marks and you know what, what's the best way to make the marks. I found out that using my hand actually works quite well and I don't even think I used uh, any brushes so far. I think I did use a foam roller for a little bit. I used a bit of a squeegee. And so I'm just showing you some close-ups here because uh, right now it is a limited palette. Uh, just, I had a bit of green gold and then I had some ultramarine blue and then the last color was just this, you know, kind of, I think it was just cadmium yellow light. And so simple palette. There are things that I like about it. You know, I like, I like the mark making and I like the spontaneity and, I do have some large versus small shapes and you know, I've got this big drip here. Uh, so those are things that I like, but for me, I just know that, you know, like how do you determine whether you're done? Um, and it's not that this couldn't have been done. It, it's not that, you know, it's not a question of time. It's not the question of how much time you put into it, but I just know based on what I, what I really appreciate and enjoy, is complexity of color and right now everything is flat um, there's not a lot of overlapping there's not a lot of complexity which comes from glazing um, putting color on overlapping and then distressing the surface now there is a 
limit to how much I can probably distress the canvas, but I'm pretty sure I can do some sanding if I wanted to. I wanted to tell you a little bit about an upcoming subscriber group for uh, all the people who enjoy watching my YouTube videos, which by the way, I really, really appreciate your interest. And I realize that there are some of you out there who want more. And as, as fun as these YouTube videos are to create, um, and it takes me about, I'd say four to six hours to create every minute of a YouTube video. So um, they're very labor intensive and, and I enjoy sharing this information with you. And you know, yes, they're free, but I know there's some of you out there who probably would enjoy a lot more information, a lot more in-depth information than I could ever show on YouTube because um, the, this platform is for people who are busy and you know they're doing other things and um, not everybody wants to kind of dial down and see the nitty gritty of what really happens behind the scenes. So for those of you who are interested in more detailed content, um, lots of information, um, I have put together a library of videos Currently, it has over 33 hours um, and growing, and it will keep growing. And the reason it's growing is because I have a membership group called Watch, Learn, Grow. And this group, um, I started about uh, almost a year ago, and in this group, there are a lot of dedicated artists who decided that they also wanted to have a lot more information. They wanted to have more access to my critiques and my tutorials. And so all of these types of things are in the library. If you're interested and want to get more information on um, how to join and uh, have access to lots of video content that you can binge on, um, things like watching me paint, of course, um, watch me paint in different mediums, um, how I'm preparing for an upcoming solo exhibition, I'm sharing that information in the library, uh, how I critique work, how I critique my own work, and um, super fun challenges to keep you inspired, uh, challenges that are uh, design and some are on color. And, and I just have so much information that I'd love to share, but it's gonna be in this Watch, Learn, Grow library. So if you have any interest in binging on tons of videos, then just check the link in my description and uh, just fill out the form and request more information so that when it becomes available, you'll be the first to know. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you enjoy it. So after a lot of glazing and adding some grays, high key, middle key, not much dark, but um, just moving this painting forward, getting more complexity of color and more to work with so that if I decide to 
sand or distress the surface. There's more to work with. Before it was just like one thin layer of yellow and white and then the canvas. So now I'm just trying to build layers like this light over the dark. Um, I probably come back over that and put more dark in, but I wanted to cover that large mass so that I could come back into it later with dark again. So in some ways you gotta kind of think ahead and think forward and think what it is that you're after. And for me, because I know I like complexity of color, I can always restate color later. I can always restate values later, but I've got to get more complexity into this painting. So I think that's what I've been trying to do. Really just a couple of uh, observations really is that I guess when you work on such a large scale as this, you know, the tendency is that you, you have so many opportunities for, for bigger sweeping movements and, you know, bigger tools and all that. But, you know, deep down what I know about myself is that, I mean, there are a lot of things happening here that I'm really enjoying and enjoying the entire process. And I think that's the bottom line. Like, is this fun? Am I, you know, am I learning new things as I go? And the answer is yes. Am I being challenged? Definitely. Um, even with such a limited palette, you know, it's not about, it's not the colors that always are the complexity. It's, it's the shape, it's the value, it's the texture. And, you know, the biggest question and the most important thing to me is, uh, I need to make sure that I'm very aware of uh, whether this painting is fulfilling my need to say what I want to say. And, it's not like it's a concrete thing, but I do know a few things about my aesthetic and I'm fine with the colors right now. What I'm not so fine with is the fact that every, every uh, shape here is pretty much the same. It's kind of amorphous and loose and you know, that's all great. I love that and I know a lot of artists, you know, maybe paint that way, but for me, like I, I started to put in this shape over here and um, even though it's not the greatest shape of any kind, but I just needed to have a concrete shape. So when I started to put that in there and, you know, it has more of a hard edge and, you know, it's um, one of the last things I did last night was, you know, like that shape and that felt good to me. So what I'm trying to be aware of is how do I move forward with this painting that, you know, has a lot of great things going for it, but how do I make it more me? So that's the part of the soul searching and problem solving, like I want to be able to keep the general spontaneity of this piece. I don't want to destroy all that, but how do I capitalize on featuring um, spontaneity and freedom, but still having, you know, the other things that I must have, which are a bit of structure. And then what does that structure look like? And then how much structure do I need? I love a sense of geometry. I don't think it'd be so hard for me to uh, put into this painting, um, you know, a minimal sense of geometry. It doesn't have to be a lot, but there does need to be some. And I think that what, as I look at this, what I'm hoping to do is to use some rather transparent um, forms, some, well, I should say transparent layers to bring about some structure to a painting that right now is not about structure. And because structure will be kind of minimal, I think it's going to actually have a lot of weight. But I, I want to make sure that it doesn't have, you know, too much weight. I want it to be there. So anyways, that's what today is all about, is introducing some different types of shape, some geometry, uh, some more line that is rectilinear, but still maintaining, you know, the freshness of this painting, which I'm actually really enjoying. So here we go.
Okay, so let's talk about this, um, this huge mistake that I just realized I made. So when I put the tape onto this canvas, you know, and I've done this many times with panel, of course, and uh, worked with acrylics many times, but like I said, I've never really worked on canvas, um, and this happened to be pre-primed, and I got it like right after the fire. So I had it stored away for like, let's see, it's 20, almost, it's 2020. I mean, almost um, three and a half years, I had it stored away, and I kind of forgot about it, but I knew I had it. So when I pulled it out, I remembered it was primed, but I, and I thought it was like great for any medium. Um, however, when I ripped that tape off and it pulled the paint off, I realized that um, maybe oil primed means that it's meant for oil paints and not acrylics. So let's take a closer look at what happened. And I, I hope you learned from my mistake because um, I certainly did. And uh, as, as hard as it was to see that happen, I think I was a little bit stunned, a little bit shocked. I then started to think back to uh, the label that was on the, this large tube that came. And I remember seeing, you know, primed, but then when I looked at it, I, I saw the word oil primed. And then I got on the phone, you know, with um, Golden, who makes the acrylics. I got on the phone with um, the, the company that made the canvas. and. You know, I mean, it, it seems really pretty solid on here now, but it's, it's more like a question of like permanence. And obviously you don't want to work with acrylic on an oil prime canvas. So um, anyways, that, that was my big mistake. And uh, all I can say is that, um, you know, it, it, for me, it doesn't take away from the joy I felt painting this and I'm gonna complete it. And I'm hoping that um, I might even find a solution. I've, I've been thinking, kind of brainstorming, what can I do to possibly salvage this? Um, you know, I'm, I, I realize that uh, as is, it's, it's not going to work. And, but I'm, you know, at the same time, I'm, I'm always like, well, here's a new problem. How can I solve it? So, anyways, um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you that that was my huge mistake. Um, if you have oil primed canvas, work with oils. And if you have a gesso primed canvas, it's great for either oils or acrylic. Okay, so that's that was my mistake.